perceptual blindness. Let's not let that happen to us. Just because we're looking for it. Okay. <clears throat> In measurement science, one of the most important things to know is what it is you're trying to measure. You need to have a good understanding, sometimes we'll call it an operationalization when we like to over-syllabalize things, of the construct that we're trying to target. Cut that part out of the uh, recording. <laughs> uh, so, what is pain? Now what I've put up here is, this is the currently accepted definition of pain, an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. That's the, that's the definition that the International Association for the Study of Pain has accepted, has adopted. Um, interestingly, actually, this definition was initially coined by a fellow by the name of Dr. Harold Mursky. And as a part of your bar tribute for you, you can impress your friends with this, Harold Mursky lives here in London, just a couple blocks from St. Joe's. But, here's my real question to you. So we've got this sort of academic definition. But what is it? What is pain? We know it's number, by far and away the number one complaint that people present at least to physiotherapy with. Okay. What is it? Why, do we have it? Why have we evolved this experience or perception? Protective mechanism. Protective mechanism, protecting against what do you think? Future. So protecting against potential tissue damage, right, which certainly fits within there, absolutely. So if the system's working properly, I should be given some kind of a warning to take my hand off of this hot burner just before I actually damage my tissue. Good. So important for protection, what else is pain? If I asked you, if you're trying to explain pain to somebody, what is it? What's that? I heard somebody, something. What is it? Aggravating, indeed. Yeah, I would agree with that. Unpleasant, so we can put those sorts of words to it. What, uh, let's see here, do you think a life without pain would be good? No. Why not? Sounds like bliss to me. No pain. Why would that not be good? Well, it's like a protective mechanism. You feel your hands start to feel painful when you touch the stone. Reaction for you to go away to reach sure. sure. So if you didn't have it, you end up doing yourself a lot more damage. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever heard of a, there's a condition called congenital insensitivity to pain. Um, it's usually, usually associated with something called anhydrosis, which means they also don't sweat. So we, we commonly will just call it CIPA, C-I-P-A, congenital insensitivity to pain with anhydrosis. These folks, as the name suggests, are unable to feel pain. Average lifespan, it's, gro it's growing more now because people are starting to understand about what's going on, but it's around 30 years, average lifespan. The thing that most commonly takes these, uh, the lives of these folks, unfortunately, would be something usually as simple as um, getting, a, say, a stone in a shoe or getting some kind of uh, you know, puncture of the skin, not realizing it. That becomes infected, infection spreads, and uh, ultimately uh, takes them. I don't think any of us would want to live a life completely free of pain. Uh, it's so utterly important for our survival that if we were to completely abolish pain, uh, we'd be all walking around <coughs> probably with curved spines and dislocated joints, and uh, we'd have bitten the ends off our tongue several times, which is another common occurrence for these folks. We'd be pouring boiling hot coffee down our throats and not realizing it. Okay. I mean, it's terrible, frankly. It's utterly terrible. So when I say, what is pain, I think what we've heard, I mean, we've got the, the academic definition here, but really it sounds like we're talking about this is important for protection, it's important for our survival. That it should be uh, serving a, a, providing us with a warning sign that if we don't stop doing what we're doing now, or if we don't, you know, take rest, or if we don't, you know, take some load off of a joint or something like that, or a tissue, we're going to continue to damage ourselves. So, Right off the bat, when we're talking about assessing pain, and we often will use that for setting goals, you know, we recognize that our goals in terms of pain treatment are not complete pain abolishment. That's a silly goal, right? We all need pain in order to live. So we'll keep that in mind as we go forward here. 